You want behind the scenes? Well, here's behind the scenes. Mechanical energy can be described using this magical liquid. When I throw this ball straight up in the air, it'll contain nothing but pure kinetic energy. However, as it rises, it's going to lose kinetic energy and gain more and more and more potential energy until it reaches the very top, because at the very top, the kinetic energy is at zero. However, as it starts to fall, it's going to lose potential energy and gain more and more and more kinetic energy. To see the behind the scenes, make sure you click on the link down below. That's how it's done. There are two types of mechanical energy, potential energy and kinetic energy. And here are the two corresponding equations. When we observe the interactions of energy and matter, we need to also describe the experiment's setup. An open system allows both matter and energy to enter and escape, like this open beaker here. A closed system will only allow energy to enter escape, but traps the matter inside, like this covered up beaker. An isolated system is a controlled environment where no matter or energy can enter or escape, like this insulated container. And the focus of this video is that of an isolated system. The simplified version of the first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but can be converted from one form to another. Let's apply this law in two different scenarios. When you pour cold water into hot water, this system does not contain any new energy. The hot water will give away heat to the cold water, and the cold water will absorb the heat from the hot water. So we can say that everything inside the circle has a net energy of zero. So Q hot plus Q cold equals zero joules. If we expand this formula out, it would look something like this. In fact, some science textbooks will rearrange the formula and make it look more like this. However, the origins of this new equation come from the first statement. A similar calculation about mechanical energy can also be justified. The total energy of a free-falling object has a net energy of zero. Remember that free-falling starts the moment that you let go of an object, so an upwards tossed object starts free-falling right here. We can say that the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy nets to a value of zero. Arguably, we can say that the work of a free-falling object is also equal to zero. If we expand out the formula and define I for initial, F for final, then we move all the initial values to the left, we get this generic statement, which effectively states that the total energy at the beginning of freefall is equal to the total energy at the end. Mind you, this statement does not describe where the initial energy came from, nor does it tell you where the energy is delivered to the moment it hits the ground. For more fun adventures in thermodynamics, consider watching the following playlist. Also, if you're having troubles falling asleep at night, you should consider watching this playlist on autoplay. Till next time.